Hello, Richard Knudsen here again. And in this session, I want to talk to you about business process flows in Dynamic CRM 2013, and in particular, about, I guess, what you could call an anomaly about them that uh, make them a little bit difficult to use from one standpoint, um, which is how to report on what stages of a business process flow your various record types are in. It turns out that there's one record type, the opportunity, that has that functionality built into it, but any other entity that you apply a business process flow to, such as case, we're going to look at here, that's the example we'll use here, there's no out-of-the-box way of reporting on what stage you're in. And Let me show you what I mean. I'll open up a case record here and we're looking at a slightly customized case form and in a minute we're gonna come down here to the bottom of the case form and look at some special stuff I have down here for kind of figuring out how business process flows work behind the scenes and tracking things like what stage you're in um, and if you notice at the top here this is the classic business process flow presentation. So this is the BPF. Uh, you might think of this as the business process flow ribbon at the top here. And you advance the stages by using the next stage or the previous stage button. And it's pretty straightforward. It's all well and good. And there's a lot of great things about business process flows. But I'm only going to talk about one thing here because I want to you know, keep this particular video uh, in the uh, you know, sub 10 minute range or thereabouts. If I go to next stage, notice we're at the resolve stage. If I go back to cases, we're looking at the grid here. Um, if you look at the service stage field on the active cases view, this is a customized version of the view. Notice it still says research. The process stage name, that's a custom field that I added. That has the right stage. If I open this one, I'll be a little bit more careful this time. Notice that this stage, the service stage, this is the out of the box field service stage it says it's in research if I open it up okay sure enough it's in research but let's suppose this has to go back to the identify stage now we're in the identify stage you can see that here it's got the flag it is identified as the current stage if I click on the cases grid now though notice that this third record which is the one we were just on the process stage name custom field is right but notice that that service stage Field. That's the out-of-the-box field. It just kind of sits there, which is kind of odd, but that is the way it works out of the box. So even though the business process flow works fine and we're getting the right results from the standpoint of being on the record and working here and, and everything works fine, business process flows are great, but there's this one piece that you just don't get out of the box. There's no out-of-the-box way of being able to know which stage you're in, at least not with respect to this entity. And I'm going to take you behind the scenes here and tell you what I mean by that. Let's look at this in a little bit more detail. And I'm going to open up this first record. So I mentioned that I have a customized version of the case form. If I scroll down, I've got this custom tab down here at the bottom that I added that just has a few fields in it and I wanted to do this to kind of bootstrap an explanation of how this works because uh, this being my first recording in some time, I've been kind of busy lately, um, I wanted to do the whole thing with no slide deck whatsoever. So this section here, this is going to explain to us what we have out of the box on case in particular, but this is really what we have out of the box for every entity type with the exception of opportunity when it comes to business process flows. So there's three process stage fields on the case entity. There's this case stage. That's the one we see here. It's a pick list, but there's no default value. It has one default value. It says default value. So that's doesn't really do anything for us. Certainly not out of the box. There is this service stage pick list and notice that this service stage pick list identify research resolve it's got the three same values that the 
default business process flow for cases has. So you might think that's one of the things that makes this confusing. You first see this, you think, oh, okay, this is going to change automatically because these values map to the default values on the default business process flow on case. Notice I changed these a little bit to make that point. I've just put ones in front of them. But this thing never gets updated. There's nothing out of the box that updates that service stage. So that's why that's a little bit confusing. So there's one other thing in addition to those two. There's a process stage field on the case record. And in fact, on every record that has been enabled for business process flows, that thing is actually a GUID field. And what it does is it maintains the relationship between the current record that you're on and this process stage. There's actually a process stage custom entity which maintains the stage name. Okay, so the GUID does maintain that relationship. So anytime I actually change this, if I click next stage here, this record advances through the stages of this business process flow. There's a lookup field that's maintained behind the scenes and it contains a GUID right now. And if I go out to the case's grid, this thing here, that is the GUID. So that's the process stage field. And the interesting thing about that is, let's go back to this first record again, you can't even put that on the form. Makes sense. It's not exactly the most interesting piece of information you might put on a form that GUID. Um, but it can go on a view, okay? But anyway, so those are the three kind of stage-ish records that come out of the box on case, but n neither of them really solve our problem. If what I want to do is distribute all of, say, my active case records across the different stages of the business process, say in a chart, those don't get it done for me, okay? So here's the what do we need to add part. So here's what I like to do. You can use this. This is a... Uh, a repeating pattern. I use it basically on every entity that I'm going to do business process flows on. And I'll show you in a second how this works. But what I do is I add a 100 character text field and I call it process stage name. The reason that I call it process stage name is because it corresponds to that GUID record I mentioned that has this name, process stage. That's the GUID and then process stage is going to be my text field that maintains the value. So notice, as I move around here now that you can see these things at the bottom, watch what happens to the process stage name field. If I push the previous, notice it's now we're research and this is on research. So it's basically updating in real time. You can see it happen here. So now we're on the identify stage. Process stage name has been updated. So you might guess what's going on behind the scene. I've got a real, real time workflow that is running and updates this process stage name field with the correct value of the process stage. So with this, what I can do, and you can kind of start to see this build out as I start to change a few of these records. So let's change the stage. Let's push that one to the resolve stage and then push it back to research. And if I scroll down, you can see sure enough that process stage name field is getting updated. So you can see we're kind of starting to build this out. And what this will let us do, for example, is have a chart that gives us a case count by process stage. And you can see that the five records that I've got kind of fixed up here, those are starting to reflect by the correct process stage name. Now, of course, right now my biggest category is blank because the rest of these records haven't been filled in yet. I'll show you what this looks like when they're all filled in. But I won't make you watch me edit the data. But let's go see how we update that, because this is an interesting process. That real-time workflow that's going to get that done for us gives us some insight into how these business process flows, how their architecture has been set up, and what that process stage entity looks like and the role that it plays. So here's a workflow that I made. I call it case process. Let's deactivate it so we can take a look at it. And you can, I should, well, if this was real time, if you were, you know, in the same room with me, I'd give you a pop quiz right now and ask you whether this is a real time or a background workflow. Pause. Real time, background. Notice that this recommendation is not, you know, to run this workflow in the background, recommended, it's not checked, and that means it's a real time workflow. So this, this will also tell you too. So if we wanted to convert it to a background workflow, we could. But let's not. Let's leave it as a real time for now. So it's called the case process, and that's that's my 
um, my informal best practice, I'll always call a workflow like this um, the uh, name of the entity and then process. So this would be the case process or the project process or opportunity process. And what I do is I always structure it like this, give it a scope of organization. I run it on the record as created trigger and the record fields change trigger and the field that I want to test for, the field that's changing is going to trigger this. It's the process stage and notice this is that stage ID, that's the GUID that I mentioned. So that's the key thing is that if you have a workflow that you want to be fired when the stage of a business process flow changes, that is your trigger right there. It doesn't do you much good from a reporting standpoint because it's a GUID, it's pretty gnarly. I guess if you want to do reporting off a of GUID you could, but Something like the stage name is much more interesting. So we're going to have that trigger it. And at its essence, what a workflow like this does is really just does one thing. The only thing that I want to do here is I want to reach up to the process stage, that parent entity I mentioned. I'll show you what that looks like in a minute. Grab the process stage name and use it to update the case record. So let's look at the update first, and then we'll look at the... Um, um, we'll, we'll talk about this conditional. Okay, so I want to update. If we go to set properties on the case and scroll down here, there's the process stage name that I'm filling in. Okay, and the trick about this is let me delete that so you can see how we would build this using dynamic values here. So I'm going to go to that text field and go over to look for, and I don't want to get something from case. What I want is this parent record type right here, this process stage. This is a parent record of every record that runs a business process flow. So if you enable business process flows for any kind of any system entity that doesn't have them by default or any custom entity that you create, you'll always see this. This is a parent record and it contains information and it contains information about the business process flow. In particular, it contains, well, the process name. Stage category might sometimes be interesting, but what I always use is the process stage. That is the name. That's a text value. So I can position the cursor there, click Add, and then when I click OK here, that's how we fill that in. So now I can click Save and Close. So that's really all this thing does. Let's uh, activate it. And now what I can do, so I'll go back to cases, and I'll take one final step, which is probably a pretty pretty good idea for something like this. If you're going to expose something like this on the form, this process stage name field, which is nice, you know, pretty good thing to do, so users can sort of see that, um, even though they can see it up here, but you may want to have it on the form. What you might want to do is just make it read only. The workflow can update it when it's read only but at least a user won't be able to manually change it. So let's just flip this to make it read only. And then we'll publish those changes and then we'll just verify that it works as expected. So we open up case form again, move it to the previous stage and then back to the research stage where it was. And sure enough, there's our research value popped into the process stage name field. So that's how that works. I'm going to show you the payoff, although I won't make you watch me do this, but I'll go through and update a few records. Okay, you're back. And you can see I'm almost done updating these, and I'll do the last two. You can watch me do these, and I'll tell you one little trick that I like, and it took me a while to discover this. Um, one of the things that you can do in dynamic CRM as I switch to the one stage and then come right back to it is you do have these next record, previous and next record buttons now. So if I've got a view on the background of active cases and I start in the first one of the view, I can walk through the entire data set, you know, the background view one by one just with these. But notice we have the keyboard shortcuts, which is kind of cool. So control right caret, I guess, or right greater than, greater than, whatever. Um, I can just do that. And boom, so that's a nice little keyboard shortcut that you can use in certain situations to save you some time. And when you get to the end of the data set, notice I can tell I'm on the right, on the last record now because there's no 
next record button is grayed out. Okay, so now back to the cases grid. Here's the payoff from something like this. So now I can get an accurate count, a case count by process stage, and now this thing is always going to be up to date. So as users move through the stages of their case resolution processes, you can always get the right representation of that by stage. So that's how you can fix the kind of the out of the box problem, which I described as an anomaly a few minutes ago, of uh, really not knowing much about what stage you're in, other than being able to see it in the business process flow ribbon. So Richard Knutson signing out, and I hope you found that helpful.